Hi, this is Diego from Not Just for Engineers. In this tutorial, we are going to learn how to create parametric models in ETAPS using the API by developing our own parametric sketch wrapper. As always, you can ask me for these files by writing down your email in the comments section so that you can use it to create your own parametric models to create the AWIT structures like the Kerkin or whatever. Here it is the Excel sheet that we are going to use. We'll explain the macro later, but basically, how does it work? Well, you just need to fill in the data of the tower in the different cells. Here in the first three columns we need to specify the data of the stories, the story height and the elevation. Then we need to provide the data for the slabs of the different stories the center that most probably will be 0, 0 and then the radius and as you can see it can vary from one story to another then we have to define the load on each story the super dead load and the light load and like before they can be different from each other and finally in these four columns we are supposed to specify the data of the core and well, here we just need to provide the number of sides of the slabs and the sections for the slabs, columns and walls. And it's important to know that the name must be exactly the same as the one defined in ETAPS. But before running the macro, we need to prepare a template for our model. There are some parameters that aren't going to change, so it's easier to define them manually just once in ETAPS. Ok, so now we start our new model. Ok, here we just need to specify the number of stories that are going to be the same as we have defined in, in the Excel sheet. Ok, here we have 49, 49 stories. We don't care right now about the about the story height. Okay, and why is that? Because it's much easier to define the story heights uh, here. Okay, so if we if we go back to Excel, there we have in, in, in the second column we have the story height, and we can just uh, copy and paste them in it as. However. We, uh, first, we need to sort uh, the data from the higher stories to the lower ones. And that's exactly what I am trying to do right now using the, the filters in, in Excel. Okay. Okay, so here we have the, the story heights, and then if we go back to ETABs. We just need to paste the data here. OK. And now, in this point that we have just started our model, I think it's very important to save it. Of course. <laughs> OK. And now after that, we just need to, to define our, our sections. For the column sections, I am going to use for this example a circular shape of, I don't know, 700 millimeters. And then the slab section, that as we said before, the name must be exactly the same as the one of the, of the Excel sheet. Finally, the wall section. Let's use, for example, 500 millimeters. Okay. And finally, we need to take care to the load patterns. We need to add a super dead load pattern. I'm sorry. And you have to take care because the load pattern names, I mean the names of the load patterns as well, must be the same as the ones in that we have in our Excel sheet, SDL and LL. 
which stand for supported load and light load. Light load. Okay, so now I think that we are now ready to run our macro. Okay, so we go back to Excel and first we need to attach to our running interface model. Okay, fine. And now we are ready to import our data from Excel to ETAPS. I've added a progress indicator, which I think is something cool for our macro. <laughs> and now when it finishes, we can see our tower in ETAPS that I think that it's even cooler. Ok, and finally we are going to have a look to our code. First, here we have the variables declared. We might have a little bit, bit more than that we need, but why is that? That's because I don't develop my macros from scratch. Instead, what I usually do is to use my older macros. So here I might have variables that I used before for other projects. Okay, and then here we have our sub to attach to our uh, to our running ETAPS model, and then here we have the sub for drawing the model. So the, the points for for the slabs and for the walls, and then the, the different slabs and columns and, and the walls. But I, I'd like to to make to point out that it's important to have all this process inside the same loop. Why? Because this way we can have a progress indicator that is uh, realistic. However, we are not going to run this, this app from Excel. Instead, what we are going to do is to run this other uh, macro. And what does this do? Ok. Here it says to show the progress indicator which I have here and when that happens it starts the other so and I know it can look like a little bit messy but this is the only way that our progress indicator can work ok guys so that's all I hope you have enjoyed this video and see you in further tutorials